Hello Taurus, thank you for joining me for your weekly forecast for the Sun or the Ascendant for week commencing the 17th of September. There is a truly exciting combination between the Sun and Mercury in your sister Earth sign of Virgo this week. If you want to get creative or self-expressive or be a bit more playful, go out and have fun, then this is certainly the combination that can bring a spark to your personality. Your charisma can really burn bright. But if you tuned in last week, you'll also know that Venus, your ruling planet, is now in the sign of Scorpio. And this week is going to forge a T-square with Uranus in your sign, the planet of freedom, and also Mars, which returns after a month's absence right to the top to the most authoritative part of your scope. So there could be part of you that wants to go out and be playful and not be so mindful of the consequences, particularly if you're involved in the kind of relationship, whether it's with your folks, your kids or a partner, where it feels that they always expect you to kind of put them first. You can be such a reliable, steadfast and true member of the Zodiac. But it's also good to indulge our freer spirit at times and that's what Uranus is asking you to do and will continue to do so through to the end of the first week of November. From next March the 19th, well Uranus is going to be with you for seven years so this uh, process of being a freer spirit, embracing the more freedom love inside of your nature is not at an end but this clash with Mars and also with Venus, obviously Venus and Mars in a right angle is not the most harmonious aspect when it comes to relationships. So I think some kind of power dynamic can play out in your situation and yeah there may be part of you that thinks well I'm going to party, I'm going to have uh, some fun, I'm going to have a little bit of escapism, I'm certainly going to express uh, my talents to people and good for you if so. But like everything in life, if we do anything, there's always a consequence, isn't there? So the lovely thing about Mars returning to Aquarius, where it will be through to the middle of November this year, is it is going to give you a lot more confidence. So if you have been putting up with something that hasn't been fair, where someone has been over-assertive, or really in truth, perhaps even controlling you a little bit, I do feel that this... Uh, need to rebel may actually be part of a healing process that you need to go through in order to liberate the true you, which of course with all that energy in the sign of Capricorn is pushing you towards change anyway. It's been a real pleasure being with you. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video or if you've yet to do so, please do subscribe to this channel. For now, good luck and goodbye. Hello Taurus, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for September. For the Sun or the Ascendant, I am sorry I'm delivering this a little later than is ideal. This month offers rich potential for you. There's a stunning new moon on the 9th and on the same day Venus, your ruler, moves into the one of the most delicious parts of your scope. But it's going to be the role of Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, and traditionally of fortune, and Pluto, the planet of transformation, which really provides the true backdrop to this month's prospects for you, because they're going to be cooperating for the first three weeks of September. Jupiter can be uh, a planet which gives us an almost in heightened sense of entitlement, it can make us, trick us into thinking that things will land in our lap without too much effort and then makes us lack the spark to go and work hard enough. Pluto, on the other hand, is a ruthless influence, of course. If we push too hard to get what we want, sometimes people will resist us. On the other hand, people will oppress us through the energies of Pluto. But the, the angle between Jupiter and Pluto for you this month suggests that something can evolve you around a relationship situation. It could be a spiritual involvement. It could be with someone that you see as some kind of uh, guide, 
uh, some source of knowledge or wisdom, or it could be on a more romantic or even friendship basis. But I do think a lot of respect will be threaded through this tie. But this is a relationship which can take on a giant amount of importance this month, and one that you can really appreciate. But in the early parts of this month, it is true to say, for the first two weeks in fact, that your ruler Venus is clashing with Mars, which is also, along with Pluto, in a very expansive, restless part of your situation, at least as the month begins. It's going to be important, therefore, to understand that there may be some situations around the give and take of any relationship where you feel that perhaps you're being too sacrificing and this is having an impact on your ability to be a free spirit. I definitely think that can be threaded into the early part of this month. But on the 6th, Mercury moves into a delicious location. It's been marooned for some time in a very inward, introspective part of your uh, situation, one which may have seen you lack a bit of confidence, not feel quite so outgoing, wanted to spend more time at home, or just mulling over your options. But on the 6th, it's move into uh, uh, Virgo, your sister triplicity of Earth, is brilliant. And it's also going to be linking up with Uranus in your sign, and also Saturn. Now, Saturn, on the same day, is going to end a backward journey. So even if you've had this sense that you do want to open up your world, you do want to liberate yourself from something, there is uh, some kind of moral or legal battle that you've been undergoing in the previous half year, things can start to really lighten for you. And this wonderful ground trine forged between Mercury, Uranus and Saturn can help you to be pragmatic and yet also bring flair to, to bear. You're said to dislike change, but you may surprise yourself from this point about how much you can welcome elements of change into your situation, especially with the help of Jupiter and Pluto and the encouragement of that one special person. Now the ninth, as I mentioned before, sees a brilliant new moon in the sign of Virgo. This for you is all about being self-expressive, it's being about funny, it's about having social opportunities, it's about getting together with friends. And it also links into that wonderful angle between Jupiter and Pluto. So there's a lot to like here. This can also help this, this sense of movement, sense of evolution, but happening in a natural way that you don't have to force uh, as hard as perhaps has seemed to be the case earlier this year. But it is also true to say that as much as there is this wonderful new moon, it is in opposition to Neptune. Neptune's the planet of dreams, and it's probably made you a lot more idealistic about the type of friends you keep, and also the type of hopes for your future since 2012. So a little bit of care is needed, particularly if you're making some key decisions around your love life. I do feel there's still this sense that things can evolve positively for you, but make sure that you have all the information that you need. Don't be too assumptive about anyone else's view or situation. Make sure that you really analyse it in an exacting way. Because basically Saturn in the ninth house is asking you to check over higher information. To not necessarily just take things at face value. However, it is true to say that at the heart of this month, Mars does return to a more confident, self-assertive part of your situation on the 12th, moving back into Aquarius, but it goes back from the 11th to the 20th into the clash which has gone on between the two since the second week of May. It's possible that there's someone in your world who's really, I don't want to use the word hell-bent, but it's come up, it's almost as if this person is hell-bent on stopping you evolving and changing if there is someone like this, it could be someone who's very traditional, very stuck in their ways, or who wants you and them to retain the status quo. If there is somebody like this, there could be some ferocious discussions between you over this course of days. Perhaps some kind of quarrel or tensions that have been going on since the early part of May are just going to come much more to the fore. But I think... The thing that can help you hugely here is that also on the 9th, Venus, your ruler, moves into your sector of relating. 
Now, it's not going to join up with Jupiter this month, but it is going to join up with Saturn. So if there is a relationship that's evolving for you, that does feel stable, that does feel that it has some kind of future potential, it means that the moves you make won't be too rash. They will be well considered. And if there is someone that you do need to move on from, it's rather oppressive, restrictive person, it could be a boss, it could be a colleague, it could be a friend who tends to dominate your life rather too much. I do feel you can take some small but successive confident steps to evolve your situation in a way which is much more pleasing to you. Now, I have to be honest, the last third of this month, uh, Taurus, is much more practical, but that's not going to worry you as an earth sign. You like to see tangible results. The sun moves on the 23rd, the day before Mercury is moving into Libra. The sun moving into Libra is very much about relationships in a way. But for you, it's about the reality of relationships. It's not the airy-fairy side of things. There is on the 25th a full moon, and this is going to bring into the open perhaps some issues that are a bit uncomfortable, maybe some secret stuff, maybe someone's not been quite as open with you as you would like. It may be that work, at work, someone's a bit of a nitpicker, but not necessarily the type of character who comes and tells you in a straight and honest way about how they feel. No, this is much more the type of character who likes to gossip and, and basically uh, set up some kind of not very pleasant propaganda. So watch out for a character like that. Trust Pardon me, trust is definitely going to be an issue in this last part of the month. You need to be with people that you do feel safe and secure with. And I think feeling that you're in a relationship where someone is very transparent, they are very clear, they very are very honest about what their motives, can really be something that you can thrive on. Even if it is a bit blunt, it's not so sexy, it's just real. So... That sense of reality around relationships is something I think you're really going to appreciate. But I don't think if someone's trying to be a big shot, trying to push their agenda on you too much, it's something you're going to be very happy with. And I do feel that generally the stars, especially in the sign of Capricorn, are pushing you to be a bit more daring and to really take ownership of your power and your destiny. I'm sorry that my energy is still so low. The rheumatoid arthritis arthritis has proved to be truly punishing but I am doing my best I'm so grateful for all the lovely encouragement and advice which I've listened to that's come in from you I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video or if you've yet to do so please do subscribe to this channel thank you hello thank you so much for watching my video I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three-card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.